if the legend of the veil wasn't challenging enough how the f are you supposed to do this voyage as a solo sloop well my pirate friends let's talk about that and more in this video and hell if you want to hit that sub button so you don't miss out on future videos that would be awesome now let's jump into the video the legend of the veil voyage is a brand new voyage that is exclusive to pirate legends and if you want to know more about these voyages in general you can check out my other legend of the veil guide video where i cover that this video is going to be focused on tips and tricks for you as a solo slooper on ways to help you complete the voyage successfully and hopefully get all that precious loot there are however some basic things you'll want to do before setting out on your adventure things like getting supplies etc i cover all of this and how to prepare for adventure as a solo sloop so go check that video out too so now that you know what the legend of the veil voyage is how it works and how to be prepared for adventure as a solo sloop because you've watched all of those videos let's talk about solo slooping the legend of the veil voyage the first thing you have to realize is that you are a high value target among pvpers and sea of thieves and putting the athena emissary up is going to be the biggest risk and reward that you will have to decide on if you don't put it up, you have a high chance of not being attacked by other pirates or legend hunters like myself, as we tend to hop from one server to another looking for Athenas on the emissary table. If you do decide to put that emissary up, you're just going to need to remember that there's a strong chance that you will be hunted and you need to adjust your play accordingly. Check for tuckers regularly, keep an eye on the horizon, etc. They are going to be out there and they are looking for you. So the first thing that you're going to want to make a decision on is do you put the emissary up and maybe risk losing that treasure or being spotted by other pirates? or don't vote up the emissary, maybe lose a little bit of gold, but you have a higher chance. Now, there are some things that you can do that will help you get a little bit of an advantage. One of them being where you put down the voyage to vote on matters as it will determine where the final storm cloud will likely spawn. For example, if you put down the Legend of the Veil at Plunder Outpost, then the voyage will take you to islands around Plunder, which already is a very big hotspot for activity on the seas, as your final tornado will likely spawn southwest of Plunder Outpost or southeast of Ancient Spire. My recommendation for best spawn point will be starting your voyage at Sanctuary. This should keep your tornado in the northwest part of the map, which generally is not as active or populated. So tip number one, put down the voyage at Sanctuary Outpost for your best chances of having a tornado relatively far from thieving hands. The different modules themselves are relatively easy to do, so I don't want to get too far into the weeds on them. The book will guide you to what island you need to go to, and each module can be done without much trouble. For the shipwrecks, just look for the ship logs in the white ship, which will help you more easily find the key for the captain's quarters. For bells, bring some fire bombs as you can light the ancients up and they will cause the other phantoms kind of light on fire. And for suds, well, each one is unique, so make sure to have Rare Thief on your phone so that you can pull it up if you get stuck. The next biggest tip I can actually give you evolves around the storm part or the tornado part. Before you put in that Veil Stone, there are some things I want you to consider. If you're already at rank 5 for your Athena, I would recommend going to the nearest outpost, selling all of your treasure, and picking up your Emissary Voyage. This way you have less that you are risking in case of other pirates coming to sink you. After you go and sell all of your treasure, where you finished your second module and got your second Veil Stone will be an indicator on where the tornadoes will spawn, which means you can kind of guess where it will be. The tornado will be your biggest giveaway of what you are doing for the server to see, so destroying the three small forts to get rid of that tornado is going to be your highest priority as a solo slooper. Now these are where the tornadoes can spawn and are likely to spawn. These are just the general areas. I don't know the exact coordinates. I just kind of know where they are in the Sea of Thieves. Um, but where you kind of finish the last module or the second to last module, right before you kind of put the second Veil Stone in, this will be kind of an indicator on where it will spawn because the tornado will spawn closest most likely anyway closest to the last island that you complete so for example if you kind of complete the legend of the veil stone at ancient spire the tornado is going to spawn very close to ancient spire if you complete it kind of around you know shark bait cove or something like that it's going to be around plunder outposts if you complete it around crescent isle or plunder it's going to take it around crescent island etc 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 just kind of knowing where these tornadoes will spawn is going to kind of help you understand the most likely 
spawning point for it. And the reason this matters, the reason this matters is knowing this, you can kind of predict where the tornado will start. And this is where I recommend sailing over to it. So you can be very close to the tornado, cutting down the time that it is visible to the server. Now, once the tornado spawns, you're going to want to complete this as quickly as possible. Each of the small forts will take about five cannonballs to destroy, and I would not worry at all about the ghost ships circling them. As, as soon as you destroy the small fort, they will despawn. Once all three of these small forts are gone, the tornado will leave, kind of revealing the fortress, but that's great for you as a solo slooper because now the tornado is no longer visible. You are also really close to completing the Legend of the Veil Voyage, making it harder for other pirates to kind of steal this treasure from you now this is kind of one of the bigger tips that i would recommend how you complete the fortress at the end matters most people just kind of shoot wherever and destroy all of the elements that you can but as a solo slooper you don't really have that luxury you need to make sure that when you finish the fortress and you've destroyed all of the ghost parts of the fortress your ship is parked in front so how i would recommend doing it is just slowly kind of circle around starting at the front near the doors leave that main uh the door ghost element alive for the very end and just slowly circle the fortress with your sloop shooting each of the ghost elements it'll take about three cannonballs per and then by the end of it you should be at the very front of the fortress with the last thing you have to destroy being the front doors the reason i recommend that is you are now parked in prime spot kind of defend against any any thieving tuckers or any other pirates that might have made their way over to this fortress once you've completed it and you've blown up the doors as quickly as possible get the treasure onto your ship use the harpoon definitely and get the heck out of there you have completed the legend of the veil and now you are a huge target if there were ships on the way they will know that you have completed it and will be chasing you so make sure to kind of watch the horizon as soon as you complete it but uh, really at this point, you've done it. You have the treasure and now you just need to sell it. And there's definitely some ways that you can kind of ensure safety in selling, make sure to look for mermaids at the outposts, et cetera. But just try to find an outpost that's near you that you know most likely won't be bothered. One thing that I like to do as a solo slooper is I like to mix up the outpost that I sell at. For example, in this video, instead of selling an ancient spire, which is the closest outpost, I decided to sail over tomorrow's peak outpost and sell there. There. As a solo slooper, you never know what's around the corner, and there could have definitely been a thieving pirate at Ancient Spire waiting for me to finish my voyage and bring all the treasure to the outpost. So you kind of got to think a little outside of the box as a solo slooper to kind of be successful in these new voyage. And there you go. Those are my tips. Those are my recommendations for how to kind of complete this legend of the veil vale voyage what do you think let me know in the comments below i would love to know some tips that you guys have kind of share those down below as well so that we can kind of help us solo sloopers out there complete these awesome new voyages and get all that precious gold there you go thanks again for watching i hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope to see you out on the seas